Today's borrower portal tip goes over how to appropriately handle two common scenarios that occur when a file has two borrowers that are both using the same email address. We're going to go over two scenarios. The first being when the borrower begins their application at a branch in person. We'll also go over the second scenario where the borrower begins their application online. Scenario number one, the borrower begins application in person. In this scenario, both borrowers need individual borrower portal accounts that are linked to their joint phone application. The best way to do this is to send an e-consent request to both borrowers, which will result in two separate emails being sent to that same joint email address. Let's go over the process now. In order to send out the e-consents to both borrowers, you'll simply want to go into Encompass, locate the file, most likely in the Prospects folder, open it up, and then select e-consent not received in the upper left-hand corner. From there, you'll select request e-consent. Here, the email that you'll be sending out to both borrowers will come up. You'll see that both of these borrowers have the same email listed. Of course, uh, if you're the loan originator, it's going to default the sender type to whomever you are that is logged in. If you need to change that, if you're an LP or someone that's sending it on behalf of a loan originator, feel free to do that. Uh, you can keep the subject as complete consent. You want to ensure that this checkbox next to notify me when the borrower receives the package is checked. Otherwise, you don't want to change anything else. Now, it is going to ask you for this authorization code. This will not automatically be there. Of course, this is the last four digits of the borrower and co-borrower's social security number. So make sure you obtain that and input that before sending. When you're all through with that, you can click send to initiate those e-consent emails to be sent out. The borrower will then receive two separate emails in their shared email inbox. It's very important that each borrower minds the salutation in each email so they can go in and create their borrower portal account and e-consent appropriately. So of course, this one is for Pebbles in this instance. I want to make sure that Pebbles is filling out everything that goes along with this email. And likewise, Bam Bam, our second borrower, it's important Bam Bam opens the email that is addressed to him, follows that link, and of course appropriately then e-consents. This will tie the borrowers to the loan and ensure that they both have borrower portal accounts that are active. They'll log in and they will complete their e-consent through the borrower portal. Once each borrower has e-consented appropriately, the loan originator will get two separate emails letting them know that each borrower has completed the e-consent and it's been accepted. If you're in Encompass at the time, you'll also get an alert telling you this in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. This will ensure that both borrowers using one same email address both have appropriate borrower portal accounts and are linked appropriately to the loan. You're all set with scenario one. The second common scenario is that the borrower begins their application online. Typically, this results in one of two possibilities depending on your branch. The first possibility is that your branch requires the borrower to create an account. So the first borrower would have to create a borrower portal account before they can submit an application. Therefore, one of the two borrowers already have their borrower portal account. The other possibility is that your branch does not have this requirement, therefore neither borrower has created a borrower portal account prior to or during the application process. The solution either way can be resolved if you trigger an early dock request to both borrowers, which is going to send two separately addressed emails to that shared email account. And just like in scenario one, it's important your borrowers follow the salutation. So each borrower needs to individually click on the link in the email that is addressed to them. This will prompt them to make a borrower portal account and their unique authentication code will be entered to ensure proper assignment. Let's take a look at how to send that early doc request. 
The first step in triggering the early doc request is finding the specific loan that's had the application submitted online in Encompass and opening it up. Once the file is opened up, the loan originator should see evidence in the upper left hand corner that at least one of the borrowers has e-consented already. If you click the little magnifying glass next to the e-consent in the disclosure tracking tool, you will be able to see if one or both of the borrowers have already e-consented. In order to make that early doc request, you'll just want to go into the e folder for the specific file, and then select the add icon to add a new document. You'll want to select add document from document sets. You'll then select the yellow folder branch doc sets. Remember to click select. Once you've selected branch doc sets, go down and find the early request for docs, highlight it and click select. Here you can select the desired early docs you want to request and then select Add to move them over to the right hand side of the screen. As you can see on top, you'll want to make sure that it is for borrower pair, meaning it's going to be requested from both of the borrowers. And when you've added all the documents you'd like to request early, you can complete it by selecting Add at the bottom right hand corner. You'll see the documents that you just selected for early request are now showing up in the documents view here in the E folder. You'll want to select, once you've highlighted them, you'll want to select request. At this point, you can simply review the documents that you are going to request from the borrowers. And if everything looks good, you can select send to trigger that early doc request. After that's done, you'll see that an email template loads. You can make sure that the borrower and co-borrower are checked to receive this early doc request. Of course, you are going to have to enter that authorization code again, which is the last four digits of each borrower's social security number. The subject line you will need to change. In this scenario, it is suggested that we use the subject line of Waterstone Mortgage, your next steps. Make sure that the checkbox that says notify me when the borrower receives this package is checked. Since this isn't something that's going to require an e-signature, you'll see that there is no signature required. Uh, to complete this, we will then hit send. You should get a confirmation saying that the request package has been sent to the borrower. Click OK. Within moments, then both borrowers will receive an email addressed to each of them specifically in that joint email account that they share. Just like we've mentioned many times, ensure that they follow the salutation. So in this case, if I am John Denver, I want to make sure that I follow the link on the email addressed to myself, John. This will ensure that the borrower portal accounts are appropriately configured and attached to the loan. It is important that both borrowers go through with this procedure to ensure that they both have a chance to create their borrower portal account and even if they already have one, enter that initial authorization code that will link them to the application. Once they've uploaded the documents appropriately through their borrower portals, the loan originator will be notified this has been done and this process will resolve any issues you might have for scenario two, an online application where two borrowers are using the same email address.